Have you been trying to get onto sound.xyz as an artist or musician or a band and find that it's almost impossible to gain access or entry to it? Well, they are going to open up their platform close to the end of this year. So it's called Sound Protocol and in this video I'll be discussing what that means. Hey everybody, this is Barry from NFT Music Info. I hope you are well. So sound.xyz is one of the most popular music NFT platforms that there currently is and it's very successful. Artists on there can generally make a ton of money selling their music NFTs and there's lots of exciting functionality. If you're interested in more about Sound.xyz then make sure you check out my Sound.xyz playlist on YouTube because I go into all of the functionality there. But what they're doing is they've opened up or they will be opening up the platform and it's called Sound Protocol. And in this video, I'll go through what that actually means. It goes on to say, when we built sound, the vision and the mission was to create a world where any artist has complete creative control of their art and career without compromising the ability to own that relationship with the audience. In order to do this correctly by artists and their communities, we had to make careful product decisions that allowed us to test our plan about the future in a way that would allow us to generate real insights without sacrificing trust of musicians, listeners and collectors. So they had to go the curated way. We've learned a massive amount in a relatively short period of time. In less than a year, they've onboarded 165 artists. That sounds quite a lot, but it's not. In Web3, there's currently 5,000 Web3 music artists or artists that sell music NFTs. 5,000. When that becomes 8,000, I think that becomes like 0.1% of the amount of artists that are on Spotify. So that gives it an idea of how small we are and how early we are in this market at the moment. They've released 270 different releases and they've earned over $3.4 million on sound across primary and both secondary royalties. And every dollar that was transacted was paid correctly, transparently and instantly because it's on the blockchain. So in the traditional sense of the music industry, that's like over a billion streams and most of the payouts would not have yet been occurred. A new music industry that values music is upon us. As we like to say, we're just getting started, but we are deeply convicted that music NFTs are here to stay for the following four reasons. So we've got somebody called David Greenstein saying music NFTs are the only experiment in music to allow anyone to listen to free for free, make a living off your hardcore fans, turn fans into friends by treating them as individuals instead of homogeneous blob, and retain 100% of your rights. And Napster CDs and Spotify didn't do this. That's quite interesting. It's a good point. They didn't, did they? So, you know, I like to think of music NFTs as almost like a fan club for your fans. That's how I like to think of it. They then go on to say about the foundation principles of sound. So they want to continually push towards a world where artists can freely, uh, you know, create. Collectors can support the musicians they love and listeners can find new ways of engaging with the music they love as well. So they're looking at re-examining the path ahead um, in terms of the planning stages to do what's best for their ecosystem, but not just for the platform itself, which I think is admirable. The fact they're looking at, you know, the industry as a whole, the Web3 music industry as a whole, I think that's really cool. Um, rather than just thinking about themselves and how much money they can make as a company. And this is a thing, right? It's like celebrities are coming to the space that do a drop, that sell out, but then the floor price just dropped. And people wonder why the floor price has dropped once they've sold. It's because that celebrity has just disappeared out of Web3. They were just money grabbing. They weren't here to stay. Not always the case, I have to say, but in the cases where the secondary market is hit really badly, that can happen. So it's good to see that sound um, is, is all on about onboarding artists and things. So they want to help as many artists as they can. Um, they want to help create the future of music with a community that truly cares about the music. But now they've realised that the time has come to expand the boundaries of what's possible through sound. As, an, as a musician myself, there are so many platforms I have applied for as a synth pop musician via the name of Cyber Monday, as an EDM artist via the name of Cyber Friday. And some have been successful and others, you just haven't got a chance. 
you know, Sands were very honest to me and they, they explained that their roster for the rest of the year is full and then they're going to hopefully open it up for artists, which is really cool. And that's what this is all about. Introducing Sound Protocol. We are opening up the Sound Protocol and setting the stage for a rapid expansion of what's possible with music NFTs. So the Sound Protocol is a way for anyone to mint music NFTs using their smart contracts. It's going to be permission, per, per, permissionless base layer that is separate from the Sound application, Sound XYZ. The protocol facilitates the creation of artist-owned song contracts because that's what they pride themselves on, is that each individual music NFT for a particular artist uh, is associated with their own artist-owned contract, smart contract, which is really cool. And within that, you've got things like decentralised metadata and permanent metadata and different data to help with customised drop experiences that the, fan, that the musician might want to do. So it's going to be a new canvas for artists and developers alike which is great because when developers get onboarded on these projects, they can run with stuff. You know, they've, they've got the skills to be able to program and develop what's needed for musicians. So this could be really the start of something big. This is very similar to what Foundation did because originally Foundation, if you think about it, they were very curated. But in terms of getting your material or your content on Foundation, you had to get an invite code from somebody that was already a creator on Foundation. Then eventually, when they knew that their model worked, they released it to anybody to be able to mint. So this is in effect the same kind of thing. It's going to be a permission permissionless, that I really stuck with that word, permissionless base layer. So previously, they'd add an artist's wallet to an allow list to grant a signature, which will actually deploy their artist contract. So artists need to be manually onboarded by sound to be able to use their own smart contracts. But with this protocol, artists will be able to freely deploy their own sound contract. So they want to support as many artists experimenting with their music at various points in their journey. The sound protocol will be open source and free to use. Wow, that's amazing. And that's how developers will be able to get hold of it because it will be open source and free. There are going to be no fees baked in at the contract level. Stage two, there's going to be a 5% fee for primary sales on sound.xyz because this is, you know, this platform is a company they need to make money. So I completely get that. And I think 8% is very reasonable, actually. At launch, they opted to defer, defer these fees until they were confident that they had an in-market product that created value to both artists and listeners. Over the last nine months, they've introduced range editions, collector pre-sales, song splits, redesigned their landing page, created new collector and artist profiles, and a lot more. They're just getting started and have a lot more exciting features to build. They'll start their 5% fee on primary sales for contracts deployed on sound to help fund the ongoing development. You think about support costs, technology that's needed, guides. There's a lot to this protocol, which is why they don't, don't just say we've opened it up because actually this is like a new project for Sound.xyz. Um, so the fees will not apply directly to the Sound protocol, which has no fees baked at the contract level, making it 100% free to mix and use all artists and developers. Number three is about fully artist-owned and non-upgradable song contracts. Previously with Sound, an artist would deploy a single artist contract that was used to mint their songs. So this, this is things like what percentage will they want back on the, when it goes to the secondary market. That's basically what the smart contract is. Each song therefore shares the same artist contract. So the advantages of that is the fact that there's a single collection page on secondary market like marketplaces like OpenSea, you know the collection section. Um, and it kind of bundles all of those NFTs together, which is great. And it's inexpensive for the costs, for the deployment, and for the car contract for the artist. And each song minted is fairly inexpensive. The downside of doing that is the fact that OpenSea doesn't currently, um, it's not currently available for the EIP 2981, which is all about the technology, about the royalties. Um, so instead, it has a single payout address for secondary royalties per contract address. Also, another disadvantage is that artists may want to customise their own mint and metalogical data, <laughs> metadata logic for a custom experience, but their contracts currently don't allow this. 
Another one is the fact that token gating by song is more complex, since all songs share the same contract address. So with the new protocol, they're moving from a permission gated artist contract deployment to an individual artist with a non-upgradable song contract. And songs are the unit of music. And to keep contract deployment costs as low, they're going to use a factory that deploys minimal proxy contracts. I know it sounds a bit technical, but this will all make sense when it's live. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you do want to be kept up to date with this stuff, then make sure you do and hit that like button, please. The new sound contracts will no longer use the beacon proxy upgrade pattern, which was critical at launch, but now it, it's not so. That was to do with security. All artists on sound will continue to fully own their contracts as we stay true to our value that artists should have self sovereignty without middlemen, creative freedom and provenance over their music. Number four is about permanent decentralised metadata. So they originally decided to serve metadata to maximise flexibility. Uh, things like their one of one golden egg. So one of the buyers out of say 20 potential buyers, one person at random would have a golden egg. And that could be say a Zoom call with the artist. It, it's where you can provide value and utility, which is great. I mean, I love that about um, sound. It's really, really cool. Um, there's been a lot of healthy debate surrounding decentralized versus centralized metadata. Um, so it's just the fact they've been looking at all of this stuff and they're going to be moving to permanent and decentralized metadata because that's what the black blockchain should be all about. Their metadata is going to be uploaded to Arweave, which is a decentralized storage network that guarantees permanence. That's really good. I have heard of Arweave on quite a few projects. Then artists have full control over their metadata and can choose to update it or freeze the metadata for each song. This is all about bringing in the right functionality for this protocol. There's also custom minting formats. So this is about having um, fixed quality or range additions. So all artist contracts share the same mint logic since the contract is at the artist level, which makes it difficult to switch. With this new protocol, they're going to be customised on the per song basis. There's, there's just going to be more customization. Things like open editions, things like airdrops. Um, things if you want to reserve a certain amount of additions for manual transfers by the artist. Um, like if they've got um, hardcore fans that, that have been part of Web3 and they've been promised drops in the future, then that might be a way to actually do that. Setting price discounts for a given list and maybe VIP users for a given song. Setting maximum mints per wallet. You know, maybe you can only own the song once. And having back-end signatures for high traffic mints. So all of this functionality is really cool. And that's what stood sound from the crowd, you know. They also talk about payments and end-to-end -end royalties, which is really important because you can have many different people that need to be paid. From the artist, the songwriter, the label, the manager, it goes on and on and on. And artists will have the maximum flexibility about how those payments are actually split. Um, so that's really good to know. They also talk about minting formats, payments, metadata, um, and also they're looking at bespoke drops that could be done as well. Um, so having a customized drop experience on an artist branded website that could go coincide with actually the sound release. Um, so, you know, if Snoop Dogg will need people to drive the traffic to his website to be able to mint it, then that can be done via this technology in the developer. So this could be huge. Um, so what does this mean uh, for Sound XYZ? So the Sound protocol will always be fully permissionless and open source, which is really cool. Over the coming months, the tools that you come to know and love will open up to the community and any contracts utilizing the Sound protocol will be integrated with the Sound application, Sound.xyz. While we look at doing the finishing touches, um, the website will continue to create and onboard artists as it always has done. They'll continue to listen to the community for ways that they can provide more value back to the ecosystem, which will enable them to fully understand the pain points, give them time to build a product that could find a set of ears for every song. They think differently about the role with Sound XYZ plays in the future music because their platform isn't dis designed uh, out of the box. It's a more about having the right relationships with people. Um, a place where the platform is a trusted portal through which musicians and fans can find their way through the landscape. So it's exciting. This is just the start of a long journey. 
to bring Web3 to the forefront of how people discover and consume music, of which I am a full advocate of music NFTs. I think they are just to provide what artists feel that they're worth and to actually charge for that. And, and it's just a way where fans can actually make money as well as the artist by selling them on the secondary market if they buy say two and they want to keep one and they want to sell the other one there's just so much with with web3 and that's why i love this space so yeah so there you have it so that is all about the sound protocol um, let me know what you think in the comments about this i personally am very excited about sound protocol i have been holding off on some tracks um by the name of cyber monday and cyber friday just for the simple fact that i want to be able to launch on uh, you know my new music on a on a great platform however saying that one of my music nfts i applied for it to go to spotify and it was supposed to be on there next year it was actually released last week so it's called patterns if you like synthwave material with male vocals make sure you check it out patterns cyber monday just type it in youtube or spotify that'll be really cool to let me know what you think and uh yeah I, I have been careful about my release strategy and making sure that I have got some of my best material available for the likes of Sound Protocol when it becomes available. So yeah, hope you like this video. Catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye.